and welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. In Huskers news this Monday, Bryce Matthews is a summer league all-star in the Northwoods League. The Husker baseball infielder has hit 286 in 36 games, ranking in the top 15 in the following statistics in his league. Again, that's the Northwoods League. Runs, doubles, OPS, home runs, and slugging percentage. And also his fellow teammate also doing well out east in another summer league, the Cape Cod League, Max Anderson, also named to his all-star team in the Cape Cod League after hitting 273 in 31 games and with 10 runs, 12 RBI, and 12 walks. So some good news there for Huskers baseball midway through the summer. Congratulations to Axelina Johansson on placing 12th in the women's shot put at the World Athletics Championships this past weekend. She set a personal best with a throw of 60 feet and 11 and a quarter inches on Friday and bested this year's gold and silver medalists in the NCAA to advance to the final on Saturday, making her the only current collegiate student athlete to reach the final 12 of the World Athletics Championship. So well done there, Axelina. And congratulations to Huskers bowler Anna Callen, who took home the junior gold title at the U-20 Junior Gold Championships this past weekend. Over to Pro Sports tonight. No Major League Baseball games on tonight because it is the All-Star break, and it's the Home Run Derby on tonight at 7 p.m. We'll give you a little bit of an update there at the top of the second hour as that one will be just starting at that point. And then tomorrow night is the MLB All-Star Game in L.A. Starters have been named. The Los Angeles Dodgers starter and longtime ace Clayton Kershaw will get the nod for the National League, while Tampa Bay Rays left-hander Shane McClanahan will be the starter for the AL. In soccer, or excuse me, rather, before I get to soccer, the MLB draft is ongoing this week, and we've seen two local s localish players here for creighton uh, already drafted in the last two days alan rodden in the third round 98th overall he was selected by the toronto blue jays and pitcher dylan turbreik in the eighth round by the new york mets we'll keep you posted as more players come off the board uh, throughout the rest of the draft. In soccer, the U.S. women's national team takes on Canada tonight in the, Conf the CONCACAF Championship at 9 p.m. Central. The winner will guarantee themselves a spot in the 2024 Olympics in Paris. The loser of that game is not done uh, in terms of playing. They'll have an opportunity to play the winner of tonight's first match between Costa Rica and Jamaica at 7 p.m. That one will also be getting started in about an hour's time. That game, the winner of that game, will then get the final spot from that region in the Olympics, once again in Paris in 2024. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. In motion is Brewington. They snap it back, fake the handoff, looking to throw. They flip it out the flat to Brewington, makes a catch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that looked easy that time. Brewington came in motion, and instead of cutting down the block, kept out the flat, flipped it out to him for an easy six points. And Trees now sends a man in motion. They turn, they flip it off to McDuffie, trying to race to the edge. Gets around JoJo Doma, but can't get around Nick Henrich. He'll go down. He'll lose three yards back to the 23-yard line. What a play by Nebraska. He's caught. Touchdown. Omar Manning. What a grab in the end zone. And the Huskers have six more points. What a throw and catch. Yes. Nice jitter block move, and it bounced into the outside 40 to the 50 yard line to the 40, 30 yard line, 20. That's Grant, 15, 10, 5. He's in there. Touchdown, Anthony Grant with an electrifying move with the line of scrimmage, scoots to the outside and dashes it down the sideline. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. How close is the football season? Well, would you believe that the Buffalo Bills and the Las Vegas Raiders? Reported to camp today. How about that? Wow. NFL, two NFL camps are open up and ready to go. Welcome to another week of Sports Island here on the Oscars Radio Network. Hope you had a great weekend. We're going to have some fun here this week. We're going to continue our position breakdowns of the Oscars. Special teams will be up tonight. Bill Bush will be here to talk about the punters, the kickers, the holders, the 
kick returners, all that. We're going to cover with Coach Bush coming up here in just a little bit. Oscars were doing some running yesterday. Their road race was yesterday outside of Memorial Stadium. What, over 700 participants for that this year? Yeah, it was a great turnout, awesome event, and it was a little bit cool. It actually, you know, the sun stayed away a little bit, a little muggy, but it felt good out there. But everybody was so excited to be out there. And then the team, after they were watching the runners, went and ran themselves. They had oh, a little good. conditioning yesterday. Oh, they, oh mandatory probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So as soon as uh, the road race was done, they, they hit the, they did a little running themselves. Well, good. They are about, Huskers are about nine days away from starting their camp on the 27th of this month. We're going to recap that road race for you coming up at the top of hour number two. Jessica was there to talk to some of the, some of the guys and see what they felt like uh, that was all about. What a great cause and just something really cool that Husker football has wrapped their arms around. I even saw a little video of the head coach made an appearance. Yes, he spoke to the crowd and, you know, was uh, addressing about the, you know, how important it is to give back for the players, for everybody to, you know, it's such an important cause and the children and, and he addressed the players. They were all kind of standing right in front of him about how, you know, remember in fall camp when times get tough, it could be a whole lot tougher uh, with, with what these families are battling through. So, yeah, I mean, it was a, a fun day and there was a lot of fun going on. And we, I had one little girl telling me that Trey Palmer was cheating in the running <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're laughing, having a good time, but it was at the core of it, a very near and dear cause that is so important to this athletics department, to this football team, to the families of the state of Nebraska that are battling pediatric brain cancer. And so it was important to, to address that. And, and they took some perspective away from it, too, is just, you know, seeing some of those families. Because there were, there were quite a few families out there that have kids that are currently battling yeah. through uh, brain cancer. And so um, it, you know, provides some perspective, too, about, hey, you think things are tough for you, it could be a whole lot tougher. Yeah. Well, can't wait to hear what you, you put together for us coming up in, in the second hour of the program. We are a little over a week away from the Big Ten Media Days, which will be next Tuesday, Wednesday in Indianapolis. The Huskers announced today that their player reps that will be headed there to represent Nebraska football and do all the interviews with all the various media outlets, Travis Vokalak, Garrett Nelson, and Quinton Newsom. Surprise at all? Not surprised at all. That's kind of who we thought would be going. And um, Travis Vokalak, if you missed it, we dropped the uh, performance podcast. It was a nutrition podcast last year, but we're changing a little bit of performance podcast. And both Dave and Zach Duvall brought Travis's name up a lot, Garrett Nelson's name up a lot, and, and of course Quentin Newsom is a guy that's been around and um, has been a part of this program and is probably going to be a starter back there. He, nothing's guaranteed at this point because all, all jobs are open, right? But pretty, he's one of the the solid ones that you, you expect to start. And so guys that know how to go represent, and also the guys that have been some of the leaders for. This team throughout preseason and throughout spring ball and preseason and and yeah the voices of the team that's typically who you want to go represent and, and that's who those three guys are. Looking forward to those guys and what a cool honor it is because you get a lot of publicity in a very short amount of period. You yes, a ton of questions in about a six-hour window, but I think all three of them will do really really well there and represent the school. I do too. I do too. And. Um, you know, obviously Garrett Nelson is going to be a media day favorite because yep. he is such a huge personality. No telling what he'll get into and, and what he'll talk about. But, yeah, he's got a huge personality, and, and Travis Vokalek is, is really great. And so does uh, Quinn Newsom, too. So, you yeah. know, personality, too, on top of being well-spoken and, and good representatives for the football program. Oscars are going to go pretty early next Tuesday because they're going to then get back in town because fan day is next Tuesday. So if you have not put it on your calendar, put it on your calendar. It's going to be at Memorial Stadium, 6 o'clock to about 7.30. So a week from tomorrow is when that will be going on. That is going to sneak up on us. A lot of you can love to come and get some autographs, meet some of the Huskers. Uh, they love it as well because it's kind of their last chance to kind of have a little bit of fun before camp gets going and the grind of the camp. And it's going to be pretty hot when this thing gets open next week. It's hot this week, it's, but you expect that this time of year. Yeah, that's what you expect. And, um, you know, luckily they have a little an indoor they can go they escape to if they need to. But I, th I just I think they're all ready for it. You know, you get to a point where, you know, talk to Jeremiah today. And he was saying about how spring ball is, is a lot of a grind because there's no game to get ready for. It's just war every single day going up against 
you know, your, your teammates every single day and, and not a lot of changing it up. You're not preparing for a new opponent. And, you know, the summer's kind of fun because then you start really attacking, putting on weight and you're, you're focusing on your body. But then that, you know, gets to a point where you're, okay, I'm ready to move on. And, but I just, I think this team is so excited to get the ball rolling and, and hit the field. So I, I don't think they care what the weather is. I think they're excited to, to get the season started and, and to get it off on a right foot, on the right note here in fall camp. 40 days. 40 days to kick off with Oscars and Northwestern in Dublin, Ireland. The SEC Media Days began today. Uh, Greg Sankey, their commissioner, gave kind of a state of the union of that league. I think the money quote from his address to the media down in Atlanta today was, there's no sense of urgency in our league, no panic and reaction to others' decisions. We know who we are. We're confident in our success. We really look, we're really looking forward to the expansion of 16 teams and don't feel pressured to operate at a certain number. But we'll watch what happens around us and be thoughtful, but be nimble. Uh, so he acts like they're fine where they are, and that kind of backs up reports we were hearing earlier uh, last week that uh, they, even with the Big Ten adding UCLA and USC, the, big, the SEC is in no hurry to go beyond where they are with the addition of Texas in Oklahoma in 2025. He said that's still uh, the, our, our date that we expect to see the Sooners and the Longhorns arrive. He says if that changes with their current league, we'll welcome them earlier, but we're planning on July 1st, 2025 for those two to join the SEC and have them go from 14 to 16. Yeah, not surprising because, again, a lot of this is surrounding around what your media rights package looks like. And if you're not going to bring in teams that add to that value, which right now a lot of those teams are pretty much settled in, then, you know, no, no need to rush. I, I think both the Big Ten and the SEC feel that way, that they both added two teams that add a lot to a conference, to the value, to the media rights, all of the above. But outside of that, you know, until – their moves need to be made. I think it's all kind of waiting to see what Notre Dame does, but no need to make any hurrisome decisions at this point. You can sit back and figure out what's going to be best. Because to me, USC and UCLA were the next two big dominoes, and so that's what um, the Big Ten hauled in. And so now you, you sit back and you wait and see how this thing unfolds. Because there's still a lot of questions to see where, what college football looks like in the very near future. The, the, I watched some of the coverage today of the SEC Media Days, and boy, do they pound home their motto of it just means more. Do you like that? It's really braggadocious, I think. But that's kind of the motto of the SEC, it just means more. Yeah, and how about Lane Kiffin's comments yeah. about what, what was the exact quote? I Basically, he it. didn't really think adding UCLA and USC did a whole lot to the Big Ten. Yeah, he said, um, I don't know that there's a huge jump going into the Big Ten. The uh -huh. SEC is a whole different animal. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice little barb. Now, so that adds to that whole the SEC. That is, there's just this uh, cockiness yeah. from, you know, everybody from the people that cover the league, the people that, um, you know, coach in the league, the players. They just have this cockiness that the SEC is superior. And again, I go back to my argument I made the other day. Yes, the SEC has some powerhouse programs at the top, but at the bottom, I don't think they, the, some of the bottom tier teams are not as tough to match up with. They, and, and then you look at even like the consistency of some of those top programs, like at LSU has been pretty inconsistent, right? Ole Miss just became a relevant again recently and Mississippi State same thing like you know South Carolina we'll see where that they go but as far as having consistent teams that are competitive year in and year out there's two two now they've got scoreboard because those two have been winning national titles so yes. they've got that but they did not have a good bowl season last year in fact I would have loved to said to Lane Kiffin excuse me didn't you just get your behind whip by Baylor in your bowl game because it is yes like okay so Baylor came in and knocked you off pretty good but so. the SEC maintains that hey bowl games don't we matter don't. bowl games exactly. uh, we don't care about bowl games unless they win them then they're chanting SEC right. but if right. they lose them bowl games don't matter except for the college football playoff that's the only one that matters yeah they lost 21 to 7 to Baylor by the way in the Sugar Bowl so uh, they got they got toasted pretty good in that I that that just rubs me the wrong way that it just means more and you're right when they lose they go well we really didn't care about it because it wasn't a championship game so yeah, they they spin that pretty well but 
Bama, Georgia keep winning titles for them. So right now they've got scoreboard to say that they're, they're winning the national titles. But I, I did see Kiffin's comments today. Also tonight, we're going to hear from Rick Lindquist, another member of the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame. It's going to be enshrined in September. He was a, a terrific defensive back for the Cornhuskers in the early 80s. Looking forward to reminiscing about his era of Husker football coming up in the second hour of the show as well. And as always, phone lines, text lines open for you, 402 402- 413-2400. That is our Sports Alley Hotline, which is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance. Buy online at woodhouse.com. When we come back, we'll continue our position breakdowns. Bill Bush, the newly appointed special teams coordinator, will be here. We'll talk about special teams. That's coming up next. Certified Ford dealer, serving drivers throughout Nebraska for 47 years. Our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Customers have been relying on Woodhouse Ford since 1975 for high-quality vehicles, knowledgeable staff, and exceptional service. Experience the Woodhouse Ford difference and shop at one of our three locations in-store or online at woodhouseford.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. During the summer of 2021, three UNL students helped safeguard cattle across the state. Neely Anderson, Tatiana Jones, and Ashton Commons developed secure beef supply plans that prevent the spread of disease outbreak. The plans protect nearly 850,000 cattle across our state and provide greater economic security for this vital industry. Hey, Huskers fans, this Friday, join us for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In Hour 1, we'll sit down with Nebraska Volleyball's All-American transfer, Caitlin Horde. Then we'll talk to two new Husker Football Hall of Famers, Bruce Pickens and Lee Coons. In Hour 2, we'll take a trip around the Huskers DB room as defensive backs coach Travis Fisher gives us an in-depth breakdown of the talented student athletes he's coaching this season. One of those athletes is safety Miles Farmer, who closes out our show with an inside look at the secondary's preparations for this fall. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Osceola Implement in Osceola, Nebraska, your locally owned Massey Ferguson dealer. Proud supporters of the Huskers and Nebraska farmers. When you're a sports fan, it's kind of like having a new love interest. You want to know all about them. Only, instead of learning about someone's third grade crush, you want to know the latest scores, stats, and lineups. To get that, you need Cox Internet. Cox gives you that window to look deeply into your beloved team's soul, not to mention their injury list. 
Cox. We're sports 24-7. Learn more at cox.com slash sports. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Everyone knows that Dakota Mac is known for their great rates on long-term fixed ag real estate loans. But just how long-term are they? They're even longer term than the silent treatment your mom gave you after she found out you backed over her peony bushes with the riding lawnmower. Even though it could have happened to anyone. Oof, talk about long-term. Hi, it's Boyd Minry from Dakota Mac. Give me a call at 402-463-4637 to learn all about our competitive rates on 30-year fixed rate loans. Insider Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Tonight, we're going to focus on special teams and delighted to be joined by coordinator Bill Bush. You were a, an analyst a year ago, got the full-time gig about six months ago. When you took the, when Scott gave you the full-time coordinator job and you started to analyze kickers, what were you looking for? Because you went out and you found a couple you've added to the roster. What, what were you looking for? Sure. Yeah, the first thing is just great to be, uh, be back on staff as full-time and for Coach Frost giving that opportunity. Obviously, last year I was a defensive analyst, but I've done the special teams role before at uh, numerous different stops and also here. So it's just, you know, unbelievably cool to have a chance to be back here at Nebraska coaching. There's no other place I'd rather be coaching. So I'm just very humbled, very excited to be here, obviously, and just very blessed. Uh, but as far as the kicker question is, the number one thing there is is, is accuracy, period. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of like quarterback play. You know, sometimes they talk about how guys that can spin it and they can make all the throws and all those things. That's great if you make all the throws. How consistent can you make all the throws? And that's the same way in kicker world. So we really worry about makeable kicks. I always talk about, you know, once the ball hits to the 28-yard line that we've got points, uh, that's the number one thing for us, accuracy. It's not the boy he can, boy, he hits a couple, and he's hit one from 66 or he's hit one from 64. Those are great, but that doesn't come up a lot in real life. In real life, what happens is, is can we make kicks that we need to have made and accuracy? So that's the number one thing we're looking for is accuracy. The portal is now such a big part of the game. How many options did you have in the portal? When you got back, in, I'm taking you back to January, December. Were there things you were looking at? Multiple guys you were looking at? There were multiple guys, and there were some. There were some really good kickers in the portal. Uh, obviously, uh, from looking at them, I was able to settle in, and, and we were able to settle in on on Timmy Bleak Road. And a lot of things came to came to, to look at with him that stood out to us. Obviously, he was a very good soccer player, you know, at that in, in high school. And um, also I had to watch him and just all the information from his coach in high school through, all the way through is that just very steady, very emotionally steady, very stable, can take hard coaching if it need be. Uh, so that was very, it, nothing rattles him. And so that was a big plus to see that. And obviously if you look at what his numbers were, I think it was nine for nine inside of 40. The same thing we just talked about yep. is what is accuracy, where is it at? I felt they were. I thought. I felt he had a good long snapper. Uh, it was hard to tell with his holder with where he was last year, but he had a good long snapper. So he was work, working in a very functional situation uh, to be able to do it that. But just to see the kicks that he could make at those times, because kicking is a little different. If you're playing, you know, defensive line uh, in Division Two football compared to playing in the Big Ten, that's different. Kicking's not. It's just, it's the same same uprights. It's everything's the same. So if you can make them there, you can kind of go from from that point on. So that's kind of our plan. He was a Furman player for, at, at the FCS level, and he also punted. Is that part of the equation for him here? Clearly part of the equation here. Um, right now, I would say going into this in, into fall, um, you know, with a Brian Buscini is our number one punter. Uh, but Timmy gives us a lot. So it's just like uh, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Moneyball bringing value. My dad, Timmy brings a lot of value because he also was punted in games and was an all-conference punter. And so he does do punt work right now in a limited basis. He has one job, 
and that is to make field goals, make extra points, and then be in a position, if need be, to punt. And so it won't quite be the exact emphasis on both. So his, his leg swing, we want to keep very consistent with making kicks, but he will do enough punt work uh, to have to build ahead throughout the summer to say that he's ready to go and I can kick this kick and do this and, and build a finish out a game for us if needed. So a lot of value in him, that's for sure. Last Husker to do that was Brett Maher, who you had back with some other former Husker kickers to kind of work with these guys a little bit. That's pretty valuable to have some guys who played in the league that have done that. Oh, it's unbelievable. And he did it back someone up that Alex Henry did it, too. Came in right after him. How about that? Back-to-back -back NFL guys that did kicking and punting like that in all Big Ten. So it's pretty incredible with what those guys did. And to have those guys around us close, I mean, they're both both very close to the program, especially Brett, because he's right here in Lincoln. But Alex has been tremendous with us, so a lot of insight with him. And then, you know, Sam Cook is basically on speed dial with yeah. those guys, too, because Great. he, oh, yeah, he, he answers their texts or questions or anything like that that they can do. You know, like that. I don't arrange any of that. That's not something that, uh, that, that, that we do or that is, is, we're always in NCA compliance, everything we do. But they will reach out to Sam and ask a question, things of, of that nature. And Sam came back and did an awesome job. At our camp, also. So, so the value of, of having someone that has also punted is really, really important to us. Your room will also have walk ons on it. So, Timmy and Brian go into the, 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 the camp kind of as the ones who will push them, who will be comp competition for those guys. Uh, Charlie Weiner should be one that, that, that's definitely going to be able to, to push right away. Uh, some people might be like, well, can he push me down the road a year or two? At that? He'll push right away. You know, he has a very unique situation with where his high school's at. It's very close to where a lot of the Kansas City Chiefs work out. So he gets a chance like that to work with their uh, long snappers, their kickers, and their holders. So he, he has very unique people like that. You know, he'll, he'll have like the Kansas City Chiefs long snapper uh, snapping for him uh, when he was wow. when he was training. You know, until he before he got up here. Uh, but he has a lot of ability. They, they, there was a little bit of a struggle last year with their their unit as a whole. When you look at his numbers, like, well, why were his numbers not so great? Well, they had four blocked, and they had some issues a little bit with snapper, holder, those type of things uh, with that. So that's not a, a very uh, a true stat in my mind. And uh, he's got all the, again, the makeup that we're looking for to be a great kicker, his work ethic. So he'll be someone that will, that will stand out for someone that's new to the program. They'll have a chance to jump in right away. Again, we're visiting with Bill Bush, Husker Special Teams Coordinator here on Sports Sunday. You've mentioned a couple times the long snappers. Where do, you, where do you sit with this, that group right now as they get ready to start camp? Well, it's, it's, I don't like the where they sit uh, in school because we've got three guys that are all basically seniors. This is their last year. Not spread out at all. Kind of like the spread out's yeah. not real good. But then I also have a, a, a young one in uh, Wetucky that also is someone that will be a, has a very good ability. And he's the one that we're really grooming for the future past years, uh, the next year past in, in snapping for uh, Nebraska football. So he has a chance to be able to do that. But we started off for us right now. Brady Weiss came out clearly ahead in the punt snapping for us right now. And then Cam Piper was ahead in the field goal snaps. They could both do both of them right there. And then Kay Mueller is coming off an ACL injury, but he also has been a starter here for multiple games, a very good snapper. And so the best way to put it is, is that competition's on. So between those guys right there, so that that's just how they finish in the spring. That's not, you know, exactly how things may finish when we get ourselves over to Ireland. But we've got three guys that have done it. They've got really good velocity on the ball. They've been in games right there. And uh, you go back and evaluate. You know, I was able to go back and watch a lot of things. I don't care a lot about the past, but I just see just how things were uh, with just their ability-wise. And long snapping was, was very solid last year. And uh, we just now got work to, to be elite with it. Kickoffs don't require a long snapper. Brendan Frankie was pretty solid last year in that phase. What kind of spring did he have? What are your expectations for him? Uh, Brendan had a very good spring. Started off a little slow and had a very good spring towards the end. He's having a great summer for us right now. The biggest thing we're working with him now is just his footwork and his steps to make sure that he has consistent of boom, 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 his tempo to the ball because his leg strength is tremendous. Like he, if he gets a hold of a ball, and he gets a hold of most of them, he's very good at that area. 
in the end, you'd really like to just kick the ball out when you get a chance for us right there uh, because of the rule with the fair catch and different things. Sometimes if you want to kick it short and make him return it, they can just fair catch their way out of that situation. So there's always able to kick what we call a mortar kick, which is a low line drive to make someone have to return it. And that's something that we'll be able to get ourselves into down the road to try to get people pinned inside the 25 because it is a little bit dis discouraging when they get the ball at the 25 every time also. So we'll work through that. But first things first, or let's have great consistent kicks. Uh, in this league, you're going to deal with some uh, borderline and then also ridiculous wind. You'll have a chance. We had it in the spring, which was that was generational wind this spring yes, that we had, was. which we went out and even for in. us, we grew yeah, up around grew up here. And I, it was stuff that was like you can't believe it. So we're going to have to be able to, to cover. So, to, but to still get the good kicks with them as we went over with all of our kickers and punters, it's like golf. If you hit a ball really well, it'll still go fine. It may not be quite as top end, but it'll still go fine. Just like in golf, you hit it really well, even into the wind, it, it goes pretty good. Hit a bad kick, it makes it look horrendous very quickly. And so those are the things you have to, be able to do. And then the spring helped us with the mentality for our, all of our kickers and punters and snappers of being out in that wind to be, be like, hey, this is going to be hard, but help their their mentality of like, I'm going to have to hit into this wind. I have to hit into this wind to be able to do it. So that part was was good for Brendan to be able to get that stuff done. And I have I anticipate him having a great. Uh, start to camp and having a great season. He would be our clear number one right now. There's always going to be competition, but the backup uh, kickoff person right now is wide open. Let's talk return game. It's been really non-existent the last couple of years for the Huskers, and, and you added some parts in the spring, and I think you've added some parts in the summer that may really add competition once you get to August, but Trey Palmer certainly has a history. He has done it very well at LSU. Is he a guy that you're looking at in the return game? Absolutely. Trey has the natural ability to track the ball, which is he's just natural back there. You just have how he catches punts, how he catches kickoffs. Punts are way more difficult. Like I've said, you know, I've said it numerous times. My favorite guy on the football team is the punt returner. Yes, that is have. a that is a <laughs> tough spot. To, you, you don't want to be in that one. That's a tough spot to be in. Out there, it takes a grown man to be back there in those situations. But he tracks the ball very, very naturally. So that part of it is is uh, is really good. So I'm excited about what, what Trey can bring for us right there. And then on the kickoff return, you know, I anticipate you know Anthony Grant also being someone that can do a very, very good job for us in that spot. Now, kickoffs, in the past, we've had the deep returner and then a guy that's kind of set up a little bit. The off returner, I think, is what you call it. Who, who are you looking at for that spot? Those two spots, uh, uh, Winemaster did a great job for us last year uh, in the off returner for us right there because it's kind of like a, he's kind of like a, an offensive lineman in a way, and he's got to sift through things, and his job is to block. It is, it is, that is his number one job. Go hit somebody. To he's going to have to, and, he, and there's a lot of variables to who he's blocking and who shows up and at what time, and they're going to be, they're, and they're going to have a run, they're going to be angry. So it's, it takes a man to be in that spot to be able to, to cover people up, uh, to be able to get that done. And he did a really good job, makes great decisions, helps the returner out a bunch for us. And then Brody Belt will do a great job for us, too. Uh, Brody will do it. That. He's, so those two guys would be our top two off returners. And we got some other guys in that mix that we'll be able to, be able to get into it. But it's kind of like sometimes when you have, like some people say, we got two really good running back in the day when you were, you were an a, uh, IBAC team like that. When they were really good here, it was like when you had a really good fullback and a really good tailback. Sometimes you get two good tailbacks and you want to put them back there and say we're going to put them both in the backfield. I don't know, it doesn't work as well like that. So we don't need two returners back there. We need somebody that's going to return the ball and somebody that's going to make sure that he gets protected to get the return start. Now that he does have to make good fielding decisions, they kick an, uh, an awkward ball or a sky kick or something, that off returner becomes very, very uh, involved very quickly. Last thing for you, let's talk the, the cover units. And some coaches' philosophy is uh, th those are all going to be backup guys. Some coaches say, no, it's going to be starters. Where do you come down, and where does Coach Frost maybe come down in this, and how competitive is it going to be to be on those cover units for you? Well, to start off with coverage units, like I always say, first of all, we, you always start with, we always start with kickoff. And we start with kickoff for one reason, because always, I've always said, I go in the history of college football, there's never been a great football team without a great kickoff team. That, that it always matches up with your personality of your team, what your kickoff team looks like. When you, watch, you turn the film on, you go, it, it could be a long day no matter what, when you see what the other team's kickoff team looks like, because you can feel them. So that is very, very important for us to be able to, to have that. There will be, you know, intermittent between starters, 
some people that are, I call them LRPs, which are limited role players, which maybe they can't do some other things overly dynamic, but they can do that one part. There's always been that at Nebraska. There's always been a couple guys on the team. It's like, boy, you know, linebacker, he played like 10 snaps his whole career, but he was elite as a coverage unit guy. So there's, some, so there's always a few spots for there. And then the next thing is for a, a special teams coordinator is how well can you motivate offensive guys to play special teams? How well can you get wide receivers and running backs to play special teams? Now, I know from our coaching staff that, that they're very involved, and that's not an issue with our coaching staff. They're pushing that. But there are some players like that that, that have, have earned the right. Alante Brown was someone last year at like that. I don't know how many catches at the time. It wasn't very many, but I tell you what, he showed up on kickoff. And so players like that make a difference because initially the first thing you say is, well, it's, it's all defensive guys. You need to have some offensive guys that have some able to do some of those things for us, especially when it gets to, to the next phase, which is punt. I always say punt is invitation only. That's who eats first. That they're the most important people besides the punt returner. Like that, what they have to be able to get done because they are protect and cover. That's a whole different phase than just cover. And so there's a lot more going into it in that phase. And that's where those offensive guys come in so big because in, in, the, in the real reality of it is, is that it's a punter-gunner game. The gunners are the outside two guys who are going to the ball. If you have a great punter and great gunners, they handle it. And the rest of us show up in the, with what they have to do, their due diligence. So it's a punter-gunner game. That is so important for those to be offensive guys because they're, they're natural uh, taught how to release versus press or versus someone trying to put their hands on them. So if they get a great job, and they have one job to get down at that, force fair catches. And if not like that, eliminate the vertical return. And so we won't go crazy if some one of those guys is flying down there and he happens to miss a tackle because the rest of the people are coming quick to be able to get it done. So those guys are very important in that. But when you go back to talking about the position-wise, a lot of times I like to do is if you have – two starting linebackers. We'll all stack them. And so what I mean by that is that you've got this one, the other guy has the next one. Then he has this one, he has the next one. So you can do that with a few positions too. So you always have, there's another starter that's always on your special teams. And then at the same time, you know, and then look at it, you have to have some sort of sense to it. When you, when you kick off, you know, who's going out there? Defense is going out. Right. Okay. Same way for us right there like that. When you punt the ball, same thing. Defense is going out. So you have to have a little bit of a freshness to you too for those guys that have to be able to do that. Now for the most part, because our coaches are so good about it, they'll even say, hey, if you need to rest, rest on first down and then I'll put you back in on second down. We're not taking a, a playoff on punt or on kickoff or any of those coverage unit parts for us right there. So extremely important for us, obviously, that we feel we have a very good plan. I know we've been you know, working very you know, hard on it this summer uh, with myself and uh, Coach Connors, my assistant, uh, with all the little details of it, depth charts, everything that's set, meetings are ready to go. We, we could have our, our first meeting uh, for camp. Uh, they, could, they could change it till tomorrow when we start camp and we'd be ready to go. Well, have a great camp. Keep, keep folks healthy, and let's get this thing rolling. Appreciate you coming in. Awesome. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate it very much. There he is, Bill Bush, Husker Special Teams coordinator with us here on Sports Night. Buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. More of the show coming up next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Attention anyone standing near a mud puddle. Trucks and boxes back, so take cover. The Nebraska Lottery's most popular scratch game is roaring down the road again. And this year, we're giving away eight blue 2022 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Flex Fuel trucks. So buy a $2 Trucks and Bucks ticket today. You could win a new Ford F-150 and make a real splash in your neighborhood. Ford F-150 is a registered trademark owned and licensed by Ford Motor Company. Top prize odds, one in 336000 Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally.
Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow green marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers fans, this Friday, join us for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In Hour 1, we'll sit down with Nebraska Volleyball's All-American transfer, Caitlin Horde. Then we'll talk to two new Husker Football Hall of Famers in Bruce Pickens and Lee Coons. In Hour 2, we'll take a trip around the Huskers DB room as defensive backs coach Travis Fisher gives us an in-depth breakdown of the talented student athletes he's coaching this season. One of those athletes is safety Miles Farmer, who closes out our show with an inside look at the secondary's preparations for this fall. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Woodhouse Lincoln offers more than just vehicles. Steeped in tradition, Lincoln customers are offered 100 years of car building excellence, insightful technologies, luxury interior amenities, and benefits of the state-of-the-art showrooms and service departments. Convenient pickup and delivery, and an online buying experience that can be done anywhere. The simplicity of purchasing and owning makes shopping the Metro's exclusive Lincoln dealer an easy choice. Explore how Woodhouse Lincoln can change your drive today at woodhouselincoln.com. Nothing goes better with Husker sports than Fairbury. Fairbury, premium quality hot dogs deliver the home game experience to your family and friends. The highest quality beef, pork, and natural spices give you the best tasting hot dog and your hometown favorite Big Red Hot Dog. Look for Fairbury hot dogs all year long at your local grocery store. Fairbury, the official hot dog of the Huskers and Nebraska fans everywhere. At Great Western Bank, they understand what commitment to community means. It's more than setting up shop. For Great Western Bank, commitment means growing together and serving their communities. With more than 50 locations in Nebraska, they are dedicated to making life great. Thank you, Lincoln, for allowing them to be a part of this great community. Great Western Bank, member FDIC. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The university has a new undergraduate business and law major. Students majoring in business and law are learning to use legal knowledge to better solve business challenges. They are also gaining skills in regulatory compliance, financial services, securities regulation, and corporate social responsibility. Upon graduation, they will boost the state's talent pool in these critical areas of expertise. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance by online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. 
Bill Bush, a lot. We covered a lot in that. Anything stand out to you or what his comments were tonight? You know, I think for me and just hearing him talk, but then also seeing how the players now talk about special teams and some of the, you know, people that have brought up what he's brought to the program, it's just you get fired up about special teams again. You know how important it is and you know, it takes all three phases to be a good football team, but hearing him talk about and just break it down to, you know, what you watch it on film, a kickoff, a good kickoff return team or a coverage team is daunting, you know, to, to see on film and, and just the things that he how he breaks it down, it just gets you fired up about special teams and so if I'm a player, I'm thinking, man, I want to be a part of that, you know? So I just, I think the way already that he's got the players bought into the importance of that and, you know, what he's kind of brought to it. But yeah, I mean, naming, uh, you know, the, um, the off returner and how important that is. Yeah, you got to be able to make smart decisions and feel, but then also you don't want necessarily two good returners back there, your, your two best returners. So hearing him break that down and then, of course, um, always like hearing him, you know, praise the the kicking the kicker and punter when that was yep. a, an area that definitely needed to be improved. He, uh, Anthony Grant's name thrown out there as a possible kickoff return yep. guy, along with Trey Palmer, who I think we all have very very high expectations, and I think that's okay. Trey has done it; he has done it at the SEC level, so he's been in big time football games and has had great success. But to throw Anthony Grant's name in there was interesting, and also I loved his take that you know he said you know. Evaluating players at certain positions, if they're playing at the FCS level compared to the FBS, might be hard because kickers, it's not. Either you can kick or you can't. So if you punt, you can punt there or here. It's really no different. Maybe bigger crowds, but you're kicking. Right. Yeah. I mean, just the way that he breaks it down in its simplest forms, you can make it so complicated and overthink it, but yep. he just breaks it down to what it is and, and how he kind of explains it. It just... It makes you think about it a little bit differently. John agrees with us in Omaha. He says, I don't know if it's my age or what, but I haven't been this excited about seeing changes on the special teams ever. If it goes from the coach's thought process and manifests itself on the field, it could be literally a game changer. Go Big Red, John, in Omaha. I agree with you. It, it just look at how many times special teams completely just changes the tra trajectory of a ball game. Yeah. You know, a big return, a, you know, a kickoff return, a, a, block punt. a block punt that was returned for a safety. You know, the, the things that a big special teams play can do for a team is just, I mean, you just can't measure it. It's just critical to a good football team. Three or four of those losses last season, special teams made the difference. And the reason the Huskers came up on the short end of the stick in those games. You still have time to customize your own Husker football three-game mini plan on sale now for $180. You choose a game from each of the three groups in September, either North Dakota, Georgia Southern, October, Indiana or Illinois, November, Minnesota or Wisconsin. That Those seats will be located in the north and south end zones. It's easy to do. You do it yourself. You go to huskers.com slash tickets and build your own plan. Pretty easy little deal to to get it done. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text if you have some thoughts about what you heard from Bill Bush. Love to hear them. Back to finish off hour one next. Don't miss out on any of the action as your Huskers take the field at Memorial Stadium this fall. 2022 Husker football single game tickets are on sale now for as low as $60. Want to get in on even more of the action? Upgrade to a customizable Husker football three game mini plan for only $180. To purchase your 2022 Husker football tickets today or for more information, visit Huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Go Big Red. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. 
the official foundation company of the Huskers. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Woodhouse Mazda and Woodhouse Place Mazda are the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers. Conveniently located in Bellevue or in Millard off 144th and Giles Road. You can shop, finance, and buy your next Mazda SUV or sedan your way. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will guide you to your next vehicle. And our full service department is there for you when your vehicle needs maintenance. Visit us at WoodhouseMazda.com or WoodhousePlaceMazda.com to learn more. We're back in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night as we welcome you back to another week of sports nightly. We're past the midway point of July. Mentioned to open the hour, the Bills, the Raiders, both open their NFL camps today. The Oscars will report next Tuesday. First practice on Wednesday the 27th. It is here. It is ready. It's also here for Husker volleyball in about two weeks. Soccer, I think they're a week or so away from their start of their season, or at least their, their camp before they start playing, playing matches. So we're about through the summer months, right? It is wild how fast it's uh, gotten here. But I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see. It. There's been a lot of a buzz, a lot of talk, and, you know, to finally see if things are going to come together and, and how it all comes together. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited that it's finally here and, and talking season is almost done. You know, they, they're shutting down the training table after tomorrow for a couple of weeks. That's kind of a, it's a tough thing for Tim and Andrew to deal with. For, to manage all the players in fall camp? I can't go eat the training table for like three weeks. Is that, is that because there's the demand for well, fall camp? And yeah, I just think because it's, it's kind of a, this, a lot of the students, athletes are gone, then football back, they do open up, for, they do feed the football team. Yes. They, they do take care of them for the next month or so. Yeah. But, but uh, that's, a, that's a tall task. But, yeah. you know, again, it's a big time for the training table because you have these players that have just been, you know, for three months trying to put on muscle and, and building that muscle and, and putting on weight. And so you just got to maintain it. And fall camp takes a lot of that. It's a hard, hard, to hard, hard time. And so you want to try to maintain as much as you can. And it's hot, but you have to go. And so it's a, it's a big time for that nutrition staff to make sure those players are maintaining the fuel that they need. You saw a lot of them yesterday. We're going to hear more from them next hour, kind of recapping the road race. But the ones I bumped into in the last couple weeks look great. Our guys look like they're in really good shape. Yeah, and I, I went through some video to, of workouts, and um, yeah, it looks like the offensive linemen are bigger, and you know the defensive linemen are bigger. And like Ty Robinson looks massive to me. It sure does. Absolutely massive. So it's you know once you see him in pads, boy. Uh, it's a big human being. Oh yeah, yeah. So is sure. Teddy Prohaska. That's a big human being. That is a too. massive human being. Yeah. Looking forward to watching <laughs> him block. All fall long. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. 
it's easy. It's the law. One hour of the books. Thanks for Bill, to Bill Bush for coming in tomorrow night. Brian Applewhite will be here. The running backs coach. Can't wait to hear about his room. I'm really excited about that room. Looking forward to hearing from B.A. tomorrow night here on the program. Next hour, we'll recap the road race. Come on back. Listen to that. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get your Ford your way at Woodhouse Ford. Completely customize your next vehicle and ensure that you are getting exactly what you're looking for. From cargo space to tires and even safety features, you can easily design a vehicle that meets all your needs. Plus, we make the process stress-free with three convenient locations and the ability to view all our inventory in one place at WoodhouseFord.com. You shouldn't have to settle, so start building your next vehicle at Woodhouse Ford today. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Save with low price lockdown from Hy-Vee. We've locked down prices on hundreds of your favorite everyday items. Prices are locked down for months and months on major leading name brands. The products that you like, the products that you want, and products that you'll want to stock up on. And all of the prices are locked down until we unlock them and lower them even more. Low price lockdown. Deals you can't beat anywhere. Only at High V.
Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. In Huskers news today, Huskers baseball got some good news. Bryce Matthews was named a Summer League All-Star in the Northwoods League after hitting 286 in 36 games, ranking in the top 15 in his league in runs, doubles, OPS, home runs, and slugging percentage. Max Anderson was also named an All-Star in his Summer League out in the Cape Cod League. And that was after he hit 273 in 31 games with 10 runs, 12 RBI, and 12 walks. A lot of great baseball movie conversation here as we move into the middle of summer. But before we get to some baseball news, congratulations to Axelina Johansson on placing 12th in the women's shot put at the World Athletics Championship this weekend. She set a personal best with a throw of 60 feet and 11 and a quarter inches on Friday night and bested this year's NCAA gold and silver medalists to advance to the final on Saturday, making her the only current collegiate student athlete to reach the final 12 of the World Athletics Championship. So well done, Axelina. And congratulations to Huskers bowler, bowler Anna Callen, who took home the junior gold title at the U-20 Junior Gold Championships this past weekend. Over to pro sports tonight. No MLB games on tonight, but the Home Run Derby is just getting started. They're actually having the walkouts Pete Alonso, the defending champ, is walking out of a tunnel there at LA in LA as the festivities for the All-Star break are underway. The bracket for tonight's home run derby is Kyle Schwarber. He's the top seed taking on Albert Pujols. Juan Soto will battle Jose Ramirez. Julio Rodriguez will take on Corey Seager. Ronald Acuna Jr. and Pete Alonso will round things out for the initial round of the home run derby. Tomorrow night, the NL, uh, the uh, Major League All-Star game will also take place in L.A. Clayton Kershaw will be the starter for the NL. He's the hometown L.A. Dodger. And the AL starter will go with South uh, Southpaw hurler Shane McClanahan from Tampa Bay. The MLB draft is also ongoing this week. Creighton had two players selected in the past two days. Outfielder Alan Roden in the third round and at 98th overall. He was selected by the Blue Jays. And pitcher Dylan Turbrake in the eighth round by the New York Mets. In soccer tonight, the U.S. women's national team takes on Canada in the CONCACAF championship at 9 p.m. The winner will guarantee themselves a spot in the 2024 Olympics in Paris. The loser of that game will play the winner of tonight's game that's just getting underway, Costa Rica and Jamaica, at 7 p.m. So just in, just, just in the first few minutes of that contest as we speak, that game will decide uh, the final spot in the Olympics from this region. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. In motion is Brewington. They snap it back, fake the handoff, looking to throw. They flip it out the flat to Brewington, makes a catch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that looked easy that time. Brewington came in motion, and instead of cutting down the block, kept out in the flat, flipped it out to him for an easy six points. And Trees now sends a man in motion. They turn, they flip it off to McDuffie, trying to race to the edge. Gets around JoJo Doma, but can't get around Nick Henry. He'll go down. He'll lose three yards back to the 23-yard line. What a play by Nebraska. It's caught. Touchdown. Omar Manning. What a grab in the end zone. And the Huskers have six more points. What a throw and catch. Yes. Nice jitter plug move, and it bounced the outside 40 to the 50 yard line to the 40, 30 yard line, 20. That's Grant, 15, 10, 5. He's in there. Touchdown, Anthony Grant with an electrifying move at the line of scrimmage, scoots to the outside and dashes it down the sideline. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back inside our Acres broadcast center acres the midwest premier john deer dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every field glad to have you with us here on a monday night the home run derby about to get going out of dodger stadium one of the oldest ballparks in baseball dodger stadium you don't really think of it that way but it is built in the 1960s the only two ballparks older than then Dodger Stadium would be Wrigley Field in Chicago and Fenway Park in Boston. Good, good spot for the All-Star festivities. Home Run Derby tonight. The game will be played tomorrow night. Great okay. crowd, looks like. Huge crowd. It usually draws. It usually sells out for the Home Run Derby. But think about that. Let's see. It's 5:10 in LA because mm -hmm. they're two hours behind us. So it's like people had to get off work or battle real rush hour traffic to get in there to watch this tonight. I would rather go to the home run derby than the, the game. game. Yeah. yeah. If I was fun. having to choose between the two. Yeah. 
It'll be fun. These guys have a good time with this, and uh, so we'll we'll kind of keep an eye on this for the next hour uh, of of, uh, of the show here tonight. All right, we are going to hear from some Huskers who were part of the big football road race yesterday to raise some money and awareness for pediatric brain cancer. You were there yesterday. A lot of smiles, but also I think everybody realized, you know, it was a, it was a serious event with what, it, what the money is being raised for. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's the, it was the 10th year, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. And it's cool to see the entire team comes and shows up and how involved they get. They're not just standing around and just there to be there. I mean, they are having fun, cheering people on and, you know, interacting with the kids and signing any kind of autograph. And so, yeah, it's... it's um. It was so cool. It was my first time getting to actually go and be there. I, I didn't get to go last year. So it was just, it was really, really neat and a lot of fun. And so I had a chance to interview some kids that we have to, you know, everybody loves hearing kid interviews, right? So I had a couple of kids that I interviewed that um, ran the race. And then you're going to hear from um, Ernest Hausman, who was a big part, was already in his first year, was really wow. heavily involved in Later helping. six months. Yeah, and, and helping to plan. And then Miles Farmer, and then you're going to hear from one of the families who has a child going through pediatric cancer uh, as we speak. So, yeah, here was a few of the good takes from um, the road race yesterday. Tell me, what did you guys just do? We ran a race. I ran a race, too. What did you want to come run this race today? To help the um, kids who had cancer. I just wanted to be here with all of the football players. Yeah? How did you feel, man? You were running so fast. How did it feel when you crossed the finish line? Great. Why did you want to run? Because it's fun and it also makes you strong, kind of. Yeah? And wh how much fun was it to see all the players cheering you on? Um, it was fun because they're cheering us on. Um, it was really fun that we got to high five them. Yeah. Are they good cheerleaders? Yeah. Yeah. How good? Really good. Because they can probably do the splits. <laughs> Oh, it's a blast. Like, we've been talking about this for the whole year since I've been here, and just being able to participate in this um, and help promote it, you know, it's been a really fun time. Yeah, this is something that goes back over 10 years for this program. What does it mean to be able to help to give back to kids with pediatric brain cancer? Yeah, this means a, this means a lot to us, the players, the staff, you know, the whole program. Um, this event, uh, this will be the 10th year doing this, and, you know, just to be learn the history of this and be a part of it, you know, it just means a lot to us. And as a Nebraska kid, knowing that all the funds that are raised are going back here to the state in Nebraska helping kids with cancer in this state. What does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. You know, it, that was one of the main uh, fundraising points that all the proceeds go to help support pediatric brain cancer. Um, so just knowing that, you know, just helping promote a great cause um, just makes it worthwhile. And your first time being able to be involved with this, you're shooting the gun, you're calling out names. What does that mean to you to be able to be able to really help and impact and be a part and participate? Yeah, it means a lot. You know, that's one of the main reasons I chose Nebraska because um, this place I feel like gave me the best opportunity where I can make impact um, on and off the field. And one of these events, you know, it's something that um, you look forward to doing. You heard Coach talking about, hey, when you're going through fall camp, remember some of these kids and the battles that they're going through. How much perspective can you guys take away from this? Oh, well, you can take a huge perspective. Um, you know that your pain that we're having there is not even comparable to what these families and kids are going through. So just having that in the back of the mind um, that can help you push through that pain. Um, but, you know, just feel for these uh, families. What's it feel like signing autographs in this jersey for all these kids lining up for you? Oh, it's a dream come true. It's something you dream about doing as a little kid. Um, and to be able to do that now, you know, just... It's, it feels awesome. How much fun is this event to participate in every year? It's really fun. You know, you get to interact with the fans and the children that's, that look up to us. So it's, it's, we're having fun out here. The, you know, cause of this to give back to pedi pediatric brain cancer, how much does that mean to this program? The 10th year of it, every single year, every single year you guys do it, what does it mean to you guys as a program? Uh, it means a lot, you know, just to show that we care, you know, and we care the same, the same way as the fans care about us, you know, so it's just, it's a good feeling being out here with everybody and interacting, you know. You heard Coach talking about, you know, think about this and these kids that are going through these battles of their life. How much perspective can you take away from seeing some of these kids and, and what they fight through? Um, they're really strong, you know, and I don't know how they do it because it's, football is nowhere near what they go, what they go through, you know, and how they handle it and everything they go through. So they, they're very strong. I'm surprised that we didn't see you running the 5K or the mile. Um, I would have, but they, they're going to make us run after this. So <laughs> I wanted to save a little bit of my energy. But I did, I did run with a couple kids, you know, 
sign a bunch of autographs. So I'm having fun out here right now. How much does this mean to you guys as a family that Nebraska football puts this race on every year? Um, it means a lot. This is our second year we came. We gave a big speech last year, and um, we actually team up with Team Jack to do our own uh, event and fundraisers. We um, put on Take Down the Tumor Nationals this last year and raised 70000 And so I was just explaining to Kieran how important this is to us because um, he will need treatment one day, and these uh, events fund the clinical trials that we will need someday. So it's, it's very important to us. Yeah, and then just the pediatric brain cancer, that all this fund goes back to kids in Nebraska. And how important is that to continue to raise awareness, raise funds for research, for support? Yeah, uh, it's very important because there's only about 4% of federal funding goes to pediatric cancer, and a small portion of that goes to brain cancer. So uh, it's huge because we need private funding to make advances. Um, Team Jack recently funded a clinical trial for day one that's specific to actually Kieran's mutation for his brain tumor. And, um, so it's huge because there's not been a lot of advances in the last 20 years for chemos and treatments for the kiddos. So, And what does it say about the football team that they want to get involved with this? The whole team's out here. It just is important to them to be a part of this. Yeah, it's awesome. They've been doing this for years, and I think it's so great that they, they take the time to come up at 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday and take time out of their day to do it. So I think that's awesome. And then just to see the turnout of people from across the state yeah. to want to be a part of this, what does that mean to you? I mean, every year I think it gets bigger, and it's awesome to see all these people come together and um, do the race and run for a great cause. So, Yeah, so you heard it right there. I mean, just how important, how yep. important this event is and, and, you know, the funding and the clinical trials, all of that, how critical it is to some of these kids battling, you know, in the fight of their life. Great stuff, and kudos to and, and Life Skills and Keith Zimmer and his group do a great job of kind of helping make sure that this gets pulled off right every year. We hear from them; they want to have us talk about it as much as possible, and we're certainly glad to be able to do that. So, yeah, it, cool event. And you know, cool listening to Ernest and and how important this means to him. He was everyone was calling him Ernie yesterday, so maybe there you go for yeah. your uh, when you're building out your charts. Maybe it's Ernie, not Ernie. Ernest. A little quicker to say. Maybe a lot of tackles for Ernie. Maybe we'll see. I think I told you right when we, he was talking there during the, the the piece that I don't think he's going to redshirt. I think he's going to play. Yeah, I mean, you need to have some depth there at that middle linebacker spot, and with Luke Reimer being out in the spring, it gave Ernest a lot of time yeah. to to really make a lot of strides and to be have some opportunities that he might not have had and you need some depth there and um, you know everybody I mean I asked Jojo Doman give me a player to watch he mentioned Ernest yeah. Hausman I mean so a lot of people have heard about him he seems to be well liked within the team and and he's going to do the right thing and and work really hard probably nobody's going to outwork him so yeah I think it's gonna be hard to uh, Keep that red shirt on him. Barrett Rude's coming up later in the week. We'll talk about those inside backers in a couple of days. So tomorrow night, Brian Applewhite will be here to talk about the running back room as we continue position breakdowns tomorrow night. We are still offering you folks a chance to customize your own Husker football three-game mini plan. It's on sale now for only $180. You choose a game from three groups, September, either the Georgia Southern or the North Dakota game, the Illinois game or the Indiana game in October, or the Wisconsin or Minnesota matchups in November. You pick one from each of those months. Seating will be located in the north and south end zones. You put it together by visiting huskers.com slash tickets. Uh, pretty easy way to do it. Well over a thousand of these have been sold uh, here in the last month or so with that customized three-game mini plan. Which, by the way, I think one of the games I, is it? It might be the Oklahoma game, but one of the games is the pediatric brain cancer. So tying oh, into it? that, where they're going to have some of the families and the kids and present the check. You know, they have a big game every week. So I think I need to check on that. But that might be one of the games that you can package in with that three-game mini plan. Is, Very cool. is that game that? is specialized towards a pediatric brain cancer awareness. The Hall of Fame game will be the Georgia Southern game. When we come back, we're going to hear from Rick Lindquist, who's one of the newest members to the Hall of Fame that was announced last Monday. We'll talk to Rick. He played for the Huskers in the early 80s. But first, time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Huff office. Rick Lindquist, coming up next. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. 
From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska's new collaborative biosecurity lab is leading research to safeguard America's food supply against growing threats in partnership with the U.S. Departments of Defense and Homeland Security. The lab brings together world-leading expertise in agriculture and a deep understanding of the complexities of strategic deterrence across the threat spectrum and in multiple domains. Hey Huskers fans, this Friday, join us for another Encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In Hour 1, we'll sit down with Nebraska Volleyball's All-American transfer, Caitlin Horde. Then we'll talk to two new Husker Football Hall of Famers, Bruce Pickens and Lee Coons. In Hour 2, we'll take a trip around the Huskers DB room as defensive backs coach Travis Fisher gives us an in-depth breakdown of the talented student athletes he's coaching this season. One of those athletes is safety Miles Farmer, who closes out our show with an inside look at the secondary's preparations for this fall. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! The Mazda lineup of SUVs will provide safety, performance, and capability on your journey ahead. From the three-row Mazda CX-9 to the first-ever Mazda CX-50, our sales team is ready to guide you to the SUV for your lifestyle. Shop the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers at Woodhouse Mazda in Bellevue or Woodhouse Place Mazda. Visit us online for your next Mazda SUV at woodhousemazda.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. Hey Huskers fans, this Friday, join us for another Encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In Hour 1, we'll sit down with Nebraska Volleyball's All-American transfer, Caitlin Horde. Then we'll talk to two new Husker Football Hall of Famers, Bruce Pickens and Lee Coons. In Hour 2, we'll take a trip around the Huskers DB room as defensive backs coach Travis Fisher gives us an in-depth breakdown of the talented student athletes he's coaching this season. One of those athletes is safety Miles Farmer, who closes out our show with an inside look at the secondary's preparations for this fall. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Don't miss out on any of the action as your Huskers take the field at Memorial Stadium this fall. 2022 Husker football single game tickets are on sale now for as low as $60. Want to get in on even more of the action? Upgrade to a customizable Husker football three game mini plan for only $180. To purchase your 2022 Husker football tickets today or for more information, visit Huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Go Big Red. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hey Husker fans, this is Anne Marie from the Nebraska Beef Council. Just like the big red wins on the court, you can win at the dinner table with great tasting beef. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, there are countless ways to create a meal that will have your family cheering for more. Visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com for easy beef recipes, cooking tips, and meal inspirations. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Brought to you by Nebraska's beef producers and their beef checkoff. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, 
solutions for every field. Well, it was last Monday that we learned the newest class of the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame, and we've been talking to some of the new members over the last week or so, and delighted to be joined tonight by another one of those members, and that's Rick Lindquist, who was a defensive back for the Oscars from 1979 to 1981. We got him back in the country, so we're able to talk to him today. Rick, great to have you with us here tonight. Congratulations. What, what, what does this mean to you? Well, Greg, thank you for having me on. It's just a tremendous honor. Um, you know, I've been a lifelong Husker fan, having grown up in Plattsmouth, Nebraska. Went to my first uh, Husker game when I was, well, I was in 1968, so I was probably, what, eight or nine years old, I guess. Uh, I've been a huge fan of the program, and so it's very humbling for me to be included because uh, I think the Hall of Fame is for really great players, not for players like my so it's, it's quite an honor. Well, you're being a little humble. You were a three-year letter winner. You were all big eight at the time in that secondary. I, I want to just kind of go down memory row with you a little bit. Let's start with getting the black shirt for the first time. Do you remember that? What was that like? I do remember it, uh, and it was, it was quite exciting um, and quite nerve-wracking, actually, too, knowing that I was actually going to be out there on the field. Um, it was my sophomore year. Um, the first couple of games, I believe we played Iowa and then perhaps New Mexico State, and I had played just a little bit in both of those games. And then the third game was a nationally televised game against Penn State at home, and that was going to be my first start. And so early that week, uh, at the start of the week, uh, opened up my locker, and there was a, there was a black shirt in there. And uh, Coach Van Zant, who was our uh, defensive coordinator and defensive back coach, informed me that I was going to get the start. So it was exciting, but at the same time, I was, I was pretty nervous. Rick, I, I think for anybody who gets that honor, it means a lot. But do you think maybe because you were from the state, you grew up with the tradition, maybe it meant maybe even a little more to you? I don't think there's any question about it. Um, you know, having been a huge Husker fan uh, from the time I was just a young boy and then um, walking on originally at, at Nebraska, playing on the freshman team, redshirting uh, that second year as everyone did at that time in the program, um, just a huge honor for me. You mentioned a, a, a coach or two. Well, get, talk about the staff on the defensive staff that you played for in your time in Lincoln. You know, in my first uh, few years, I guess, first two or three years, Lance Van Zant was the uh, defensive coordinator and coach of the defensive backs. Charlie McBride was in charge of the, the defensive line. George Darlington uh, coached uh, the defensive ends. And uh, John Melton was uh, the linebackers coach at the time. Um, I guess for my senior year, Coach Van Zant had left and I believe went to the New Orleans Saints to coach with Bum Phillips. Uh, so then Bob Thornton, who was a former Nebraska player, he uh, came on board and coached the secondary. And actually that my senior year, we did not even have a defensive coordinator. It was just kind of a shared responsibility. How tight do you get with, with coaches at the college level, How, at least in your day? What, what was that relationship like? Well, it was, it was one more of respect than, than anything. Um, clearly, you spend a lot of time with these uh, men, and, and um, so you, you go, grow close to them, but, but yet it's mainly, I guess, just a, a respect uh, relationship. Teammates. Tell me about some of the teammates that you played with. Who, who were some of the guys you kind of you clung to in your days in Lincoln? Well, uh, most of my good friends were fellow defensive backs. Uh, early in my career, I really looked up to Jim Pillen, who was a senior when I was a, a redshirt. Uh, players in my class, Jeff Krejci, L.G. Searcy, Craig Bowl, who's now the Wyoming coach, was a close friend as well, or is still a close friend. Um, so those are some of the guys that... Uh, that I really hung around with. Um, there were a lot of great players on, on our teams. Uh, played with uh, Turner Gill and Mike Rozier, Roger Craig, Dave Remington, Dean Steincooler, you know, some, some outstanding players. Most of those fellows, I guess, were a year or two years younger than me, but uh, a lot of talent on the teams that we had. 
Getting busy with Rick Lindquist, who's the newest member of the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame, a DB for the Cornhuskers, had nine career interceptions for the Huskers from 79 81. You mentioned some pretty, pretty big names there on the offensive side of the ball. What were practices like going against those kind of guys? You know, they were pretty spirited, I will tell you that. And, um, and particularly in the spring, there was more live contact than, um, than during the, the regular season. But even that first week or so of fall camp, we would go ones on ones um, uh, somewhat. And I would, I, at least my memory uh, serves me correctly, defense got the best of the offense, despite the fact of, you know, Turner Gill, Irving Fryer, Mike Rozier. I think defense, we kind of held our own back then. All right, let's talk some games, Rick. Which, which, which games kind of stick out to you? What, what games do you kind of hearken back to when you think of your playing days? Well, um, the last game that I played, we, we played in the 1982 Orange Bowl uh, against Clemson. And as it turned out, it was a national championship game. I believe we went into this game ranked fourth. Clemson was undefeated and ranked first. But... Um, Whoever was ranked second and third, I can't remember, but they both lost. So ours was um, a de facto national championship game. And unfortunately, we got beat 22 to 15. Um, so that one kind of stung, and that was the last Husker game that I played. Um, and, and then the first game, really, that I started was, was a memorable one, as I said, my sophomore year against Penn State because it was a – a big game, my first game starting, and um, a nationally televised game. So those two in particular stand out. Clemson had Refrigerator Perry on that team, if I remember right. They did, and um, we had kind of a tough situation down there. Clemson probably had, oh, I would think 40,000 or more fans in that Orange Bowl. And, you know, Nebraska fans travel very well, but that's a long way to come from um, Nebraska all the way down to Miami. So we probably only had 10,000 fans there and so it was really like a almost like a home game for Clemson and that played a role in that game that was kind of the way it was almost a lot of those Orange Bulls wasn't it Rick I mean you one of the Florida schools or a Clemson school so much easier for them to get to all right let's talk about life outside of football for you Lincoln you were an academic all-american what was what was campus life for you well not didn't have a lot of free time <laughs> um, all takes up a lot of time it a basic day you had to have all your classes in the morning uh, so that you could uh, get over for meetings get taped practice weightlifting and then at night it's time to do all your all your homework and get ready for your classes and tests so pretty structured uh, situation and I think it really kind of prepared me well for for life after after football in the real world well let's talk about life after football update everybody on what you're doing well, I'm a lawyer. I graduated from the uh, University of Nebraska College of Law in 1985, and I've been practicing in Omaha since then, so I've been practicing law for about 37 years. Um, I've been married, my wife Joni, uh, for 31 years, and I have three great children, uh, Kara, Lee, and Alex. Uh, one lives, uh, Kara lives in Dallas, uh, Lee lives in New York City, and uh, Alex is in the process of moving from Houston to Chicago. So, got kids all over the country. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Rick, again, congratulations. So well deserved. I know they're going to honor your class uh, at the Georgia Southern game in September. It'll be great to see you uh, down on the field. I'm sure your family's going to be a present. And, and it, Soak this in. This is a cool moment for you, and, and uh, just just re soak it all in as, as my best advice for the next couple months for you. Well, we'll try to do that. I appreciate uh, your kind words. Rick Lindquist, who, again, is a member of the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame. He'll be enshrined that weekend of that Georgia Southern game. He joined us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car mind to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, phone lines, tech signs back open for you. 402 413 2400. Jessica will rejoin me next. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Auto correct. Suggest Uber. Pick up. Home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Huh. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser-Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. 
At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Hey folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. The Nebraska FFA is growing leaders and building communities. Together, we are strengthening agriculture. The Nebraska FFA Foundation believes in our future leaders and the communities they serve. We believe in the future of agriculture. Join us in the I Believe in the Future of Ag campaign. Learn more at neffafoundation.org. Brought to you by CPI, cooperative producers, adding value, sharing success. And the Nebraska Farm Bureau, the trusted voice for Nebraska farm and ranch families. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Any lot, any lot, set, hut! Announcing the Nebraska Lottery's Lucky for Life Ticket Snap. Start the play by purchasing a Lucky for Life ticket by July 26th and enter the voucher number for a chance to win Nebraska football skybox season tickets, regular season tickets, single game tickets, or a weekend football experience. It's our Lucky for Life Ticket Snap promotion, and it's 100 yards of fun. Lucky for life, top prize odds, one in 30 million. Hey, Huskers fans, this Friday, join us for another encore presentation of Sports Nightly. In hour one, we'll sit down with Nebraska Volleyball's All-American transfer, Caitlin Horde. Then we'll talk to two new Husker Football Hall of Famers, Bruce Pickens and Lee Coons. In hour two, we'll take a trip around the Huskers DB room as defensive backs coach Travis Fisher gives us an in-depth breakdown of the talented student athletes he's coaching this season. One of those athletes is safety Miles Farmer, who closes out our show with an inside look at the secondary's preparations for this fall. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Auto correct. Suggest Uber. Pick up. Home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Huh. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Bush, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. They say if you listen hard enough, you can hear the corn grow. It's true. When you're out in the field, you understand its challenges and what it needs to thrive. Channel Seedsmen bring insights from the field to our team of bear plant breeders. Their knowledge inspires our product development. From your best ground to your most challenging conditions, our products are designed to perform in your fields. Visit ChannelListens.com to see our latest innovations. Always read and follow IRM where applicable. Grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It's sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you on a Monday night, 402-413-2400. That's the number to call 
or fire off a text. The home run derby is underway. Julio uh, Rodriguez from the Seattle Mariners just popped 32 out of the ballpark and defeated Corey Seager in the first quarterfinal matchup. So he Rodriguez is on to the second round. They're getting the Kyle Schwarber. Well, no, that's the uh, Ronald Acuna Pete Alonso matchup is just getting underway as well. So that'll be fun. Big crowd. Looks like it's sold out at Dodger Stadium. You were talking about you would rather go to this than the actual game tomorrow night. Stephen Bellevue says, I sort of agree with Jessica, but compared to other All-Star games, at least the MLB game means something. It's an actual game. That's true. Uh, the winning side gets home field advantage for the World Series. Steve, they don't do that anymore. They stopped that in 2017. That, that was about a 10-year run where the winner of the All-Star game, they got home field for their team in the World Series. They stopped that in, with a collective bargaining agreement in 2017. Now it's the best record in baseball gets home field but he's right it's a real game where the NBA all-star game nobody plays defense it's just kind of goofy stuff that they do the Pro Bowl they might as well just not even do in football yeah that Don't needs to go away yeah get rid of it get that just go away with that but and this is this it's pretty much a real game and man it's awful if somebody gets hurt in that that game and it's happened in the past guys hurt an arm and elbow something and sometimes it like goes extra innings like there's been it a has. few games that have gone mm -hmm. like 18 innings yep. but i just i just you know like watching the home run derby and it's become such a production and it has. it's pretty um it's pretty fun to watch the the head to head but I, I i was i was saying you better save some gas though a lot of times you see guys have a huge first round and then it's all out of the tank by the time you get to the second and final round so Rodriguez, great first round. Can he keep it going? We'll uh, look forward to watching the rest of that here tonight. Did you watch the Open over the weekend? Of course I did. I was glued to the TV. That was one of the more exciting tournaments that they've had it in was. Uh, a lot this, of this season. Yes, a lot of birdies. Um, you know, just the storylines unfolding. And, you know, how they had a different kind of guy emerge and, and have a great day. And then you had the, the cams had a really big day. But then when they played, when they were the leaders and teed off last, they didn't play as well. So then it was Rory and Victor's day. And then here comes Cam yesterday. I, I love that. I told you this off the air. Like, I'm a big fan of upsets and, you know, the underdog. And it was, it was Rory's show, right? It was set up that it was Rory's. He was the hometown favorite, and he's got the crowd behind him, and it, he's going to win it, and he's going to finally get his major win And um, after the long drought. And then for Cam Young to just storm right back and just take it. He took it from him yesterday. I loved it. He did. I loved it. It was, I, it was great theater. I have nothing against Rory. I, I kind of like Rory, but you're right. They really drummed up that storyline. I had a buddy. I'm trying to find this. Texted me this says that Cam Smith beating Rory feels like a road team winning a game seven or North Carolina spoiling Coach K's last dance. Exactly. Exactly. Like it was played up to be that yep. Rory was it was his time. Yep. He is the one he's gonna get it done. And the, you know, he the way he played, nobody can catch him and um, you know, and even out of the gate, you know, he he put a couple birdies together, but Quietly, uh, here comes, and even um, Cam, the other Cam, Cam Tim Young, Cam Young, um, the he eagles out and ends up passing. Rory ends up getting third. Like the those right. Cams found it again and were putting on a show. They did, and it wasn't really until the back the the back nine that really they started paying attention. Oh wait, Rory, wait minute, these guys, Rory might have uh, things cut out for him today. He might not be such a sure winner. It took Rory 36 putts to make the final round, so that's two per hole. That's a lot. Where Cam Smith had those five straight birdies early in the back nine, and he just went out and took it. And I, and I love it when events are won, not somebody losing it. I yes. felt like Cam Smith went and won it. Oh, he did. And Rory even said that. You know, he, he came out. It was his day. He won it. And, yeah, he went out there and took it. I love, too, because you said even going into it that, like, you know, this isn't just about going up there and, and – bomb in the drive and setting yourself up you have to be strategic you have to putt it well you, you have to be well. strategic and rory didn't putt it very well i mean he you know he two putted every single hole on on sunday he did i think the tournament was one on 17 when cam smith made that 15 12 12 to 15 foot par putt how would you like to be able to putt like cam smith Ooh, pretty impressive the underlying theme all weekend was golf is in a turmoil right now with the live tour that has been launched. It's taking people away from the PGA. Sergio announced today 
that he's leaving the DP tour. He doesn't feel like he's really wanted on that tour anymore. Um, so he's totally all in now on live. There's talk that Cam Smith, who just won yesterday, might be going to live. But I felt like there was some unfair treatment by NBC towards Dustin Johnson, who's a live member now, to the point where they would purposely leave him off the little tiny leaderboard in the corner of the screen when he was tied with some other golfers who weren't as big a names as him. His name wasn't up there. I think there was some purposeful, and I didn't like that. I, you can not like what Liv's doing, but that he was in the field. He should have been treated fairly. I've been a fan of Dustin Johnson since he came on and um, you know has been relevant in the PGA. And so for a long time, I've been a fan of his. But... You know, I understand that he, he kind of fell off a little bit, but in the past, if a big name like Dustin Johnson was even anywhere close to the leaders, they would show him more than what they did. I feel like they showed him every third or fourth shot, and yesterday it seemed like they were only showing him when he was either putting to try to save par on a really tough putt or ha hit a bad shot into the, you know, bad grass. And um, so, yeah, I, I didn't think that they showed accurately kind of how things were unfolding. It was kind of all on Rory and Victor and maybe one of the cams every now and again. And then yesterday it was kind of all between, you know, Cam and Rory. And so, um, you know, and then one of them goes on a spiel about the live. And again, we've, we've talked about that. And I understand if you have your stances on that, but I just leave it out of the tournament. You know, it's I agree. That's in the, the broadcast. Talks. That's for the shows during the week. Yeah. Once the tournament's going, concentrate on the tournament. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I thought they could have, and I, I texted you, I said, I wish they, I feel like they're not showing Dustin enough when he's in the hunt. Right. And that this has been a big name in golf for a long Huge time. Name. Huge name. That had the Live Golf Tour not have happened, they would have been showing a lot more of him. Totally agree. But purposely leaving him off the little mini leaderboard, that's, that was, to me, really petty by NBC. I mean, he's made his choice. Um, I mean... I don't know. If somebody came and said, Greg, we want you to move to Ireland and broadcast soccer. You don't know soccer very well, but we're going to pay you $40 million. I'm going. <laughs> right? I'm going to go. For the low, low price of 40 mil? 40 mil. That's my price. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you and I both kind of felt the same way that I, you know, I, I, I was watching early Saturday, and Dustin got to within a shot of the lead, and that's when they kind of launched into their whole live and, how bad this is for the sport and to move an audio. And you know what? We have lived through these type of things in the past. We've had the ABA and the NBA, and then they finally merged. We had the AFL and the NFL, and they finally merged. And so this is not something that's never happened in sports. Now you could say the, the money's coming from a country we don't like in Saudi Arabia, but boy, that's a tricky path to go down too because China's a pretty big investor in the NBA, and China's not really a great country to be a fan of right now. So I... That's a tough road to go down, but it'll be interesting to see. And if, if Smith goes to the live, wow, that'd be a huge coup. I just, I think, you know, the more that the PJ, because I think whether they say it publicly or not, I do think a lot of the players believe there should be some changes. And the more that the PGA drags in their heels, you know, sticks their heels in the mud and, you know, doesn't want to remotely even come to the table about things i know they've said that they might but until they are coming to the table and saying hey let's let's talk about some things i think they're going to keep seeing people jump ship i agree i agree uh you know i i, I was on twitter i was kind of looking up what what were people thinking of nbc's coverage and they were getting a lot of grief people thought they felt they played way too many commercials and hey, they, they did get, they got to pay the bills I, I get that but it just at least like, they showed the box sometimes but and as an advertiser do you like that your commercials one half of the screen are you really liking that i don't know if i would like that but it just seemed like they missed a lot of golf i, I don't know and they had a lot of featurey type things where they were talking about the bridge and talking about you know is like yeah i agree i thought just a lot of times because there's something going on at all times which again to the point about dustin johnson there were times that you could have fit in fit in showing other players shots a little bit more i think than what they did it, it's almost like they came in with a storyline and then we gotta we're gonna to stick to it yep. but then they had to a bird away from it when um, the cam started coming on, but yeah, um, I don't know. At least we can see something of what's going on, on during the commercials. One more college football note I want to work in here before we hit our last break of the night. Texas Tech 
is announcing that they are going, they're collective, and these collectives, and we've talked about this some with Trev Alberts in the past, they are going to offer $25,000 NIL contracts to 100 football players. The 85 scholarships and 15 walk-ons that they're going to come up with, this collective has raised enough money to do that, a one-year deal that with a renewal for the next year. Uh, they've collected donations. These the collectives have collected the donations. That's a really redundant sentence I just threw out there at everybody. But we've heard schools in the past say they were going to do this. Texas Tech is all in. They announced last week they're putting together a $200 million new football facility. The one here in Lincoln is 150 or maybe now to 160 They're going to $200 million, but $25,000 per player. Look wow, at Texas Tech trying to take over the new Big 12. Right? Well, my goodness. <laughs> crazy but cool opportunity not just for the players that are on the roster but those walk-ons to have that opportunity too I, i'm glad that they've extended it above and beyond the, the 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 85 scholarship players i guess tip of the cap if they can pull this off and do this what well, last year we talked about i think we talked about almost this time a year ago how byu had come up with something similar for BYU, mm -hmm. that they were they were coming up with uh, a, a set fee. I don't remember what the number was that they had done for all their football players, but this is a huge deal. It was a big topic today at the SEC. Um, your guy Lane Kiffin was bringing that up again about NIL and the richer getting richer and all that type of thing. So, wow, big big time dollars being thrown around. All right, I need to take a break. Time to tell you though to buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office: We've got weekend winners to lay out. We're going to get to that next. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Attention anyone standing near a mud puddle. Trucks and Bucks is back, so take cover. The Nebraska Lottery's most popular scratch game is roaring down the road again. And this year, we're giving away eight blue 2022 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Flex Fuel trucks. So buy a $2 Trucks and Bucks ticket today. You could win a new Ford F-150 and make a real splash in your neighborhood. Ford F-150 is a registered trademark owned and licensed by Ford Motor Company. Top prize odds one in 336000 this year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help us with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. J.D. Power ranked shelter insurance number one in customer satisfaction among auto insurers in the central region and number one in price. See agents Jeff Bond, Reed Duvall, or Richard Deers in Lincoln for a free insurance review. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. 
Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance by online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, Tim's going to jump on here as we look at weekend winners. Jessica, what do you have? So it's kind of a winner slash loser, but you know, the SBs are coming up and it's, they hold it on a day where there's absolutely no sports being held and they announce the nominees for the SBs, right? And so in the category for the best female collegiate athlete, Aaliyah Boston, who played for South Carolina, helped lead them to a national championship, was the national player of the year, the defensive player of the year, was not invited despite being nominated to the ESPYs. So Don Staley, who is a boss, love her, she's done so much for the game of women's basketball, put out a tweet that, I mean, it blew up Twitter last night. But she put, like, really, who in the room from ESPN ESPYs decided it was a great idea not to invite March Madness Women's Basketball National Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year? Not one person was able to see the uproar this would cause. There's definitely something wrong with the makeup of the room. The fight continues. Women's basketball stand up. So standing up for her who, player. Who, who's in that category? Do we know? Uh, Jocelyn Allo. Um, for softball, and then there's a soccer player, um, and let me see. Suni Lee, maybe from um, Jim. And let's see here. Um, there's three other names. Okay, I, all I'm seeing is um, is Jocelyn Allo. I had another one pulled up here, but yeah, so she was, who will probably win it. I would um, think. Yeah, so here here it is. Boston College lacrosse star Charlotte North, and then the Florida State soccer player Jalen Howell. Huh. So, um, but yeah, last year Paige Beckers won it, and she gave a speech and actually called out yeah. for more coverage of, of women's athletes and specifically black women's athletes. And then they didn't invite wow. the best player in women's college basketball. But, you know, shout out Don Staley for calling out ESPN for standing up for her player. And again, uh, she's been a big voice in women's basketball. So, my winner is Don Staley for you know for, standing yeah. up and being the voice and calling out ESPN. Very the good. loser is ESPN. Very good. <laughs> Tim. I'm going to go with Jackson Holiday. He's the first overall yes. pick in the MLB draft, son of Matt Holiday. Um, Can he drive yet? Is I was going to say, you think, you know, Zach Wilson got a lot of headlines last week for weird reasons. The quarterback of the yes. New York Jets, he looks very yes, he young. Uh, Jackson Holiday looks younger. He looks like he's about coming out of the Little League World Series. But I mean that all in good fun. He uh, first overall pick. It's kind of cool because, you know, he got to live in your dad's shadow, but now he's going to get an opportunity uh, drafted by the Orioles uh, to have a great career of his own. So Very cool. Jackson Holiday. Uh, it was a big wedding weekend. You know, it was yes. a little, little private affair out in Vegas. I was not invited to that one. Oh, the... The yes. Benifer. Yes. Ben Affleck. Oh, I, saw Jennifer that. Lopez. I saw that. That Benifer. happened fast, I feel uh, like. I did go to one in Omaha, and then I got back in time to go to the reception for our own Seamus McKnight. That's we awesome. We got married this weekend. Congratulations to Seamus and Melissa. That is so cool. You will not meet a nicer fellow than Seamus McKnight. Congrats, Seamus. I mean, I would not have survived my first year here without Seamus. He's awesome. He sent me players after players when I didn't know him yet, hadn't built that relationship. So, no, he's awesome. He's great at what he does, and... Everybody loves him. Came to Nebraska right at the end of 1997, which then Scott Frost, Matt Davison led the Huskers to the national championship game. So there's a debate whether Sheamus' arrival was the start of the curse or was he the good luck that got the last national title? Kind of a debate right there, but congrats to Sheamus and Melissa. Thanks, everybody, for tonight. Tomorrow we'll continue our position breakdowns. We talk running backs. Cannot wait to sit down with Brian Applewhite. I am so excited about this room. That'll be fun to do that tomorrow night. We'll also hear a nutrition podcast. Dave Ellis, Zach Duvall. Cannot wait to get into that tomorrow night as well. Thanks to Tim, Jessica, and Cole. Have a good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics.
The Ford truck lineup is purpose-built from the ground up, designed to be tough and productive. Crafted with high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body and torture-tested high-strength steel frame with new tech to help you work smart and hard. The F-150, Ranger, and Maverick are built tough and ready to tackle whatever lies ahead. Hit the road in confidence and learn more about Ford trucks in-store or online anytime at WoodhouseFord.com. Your trusted truck dealer since 1975. Woodhouse Ford. Don't miss out on any of the action as your Huskers take the field at Memorial Stadium this fall. 2022 Husker football single game tickets are on sale now for as low as $60. Want to get in on even more of the action? Upgrade to a customizable Husker football three game mini plan for only $180. To purchase your 2022 Husker football tickets today or for more information, visit Huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Go Big Red. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he's so hot. The air conditioning is out again. But wait, he sees an opening. SOS. SOS, he screams and calls 391-2336. SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer. Boy, he made the right call today as SOS is already on the way. SOS is your trustworthy company since 1950, and with Luxair, you get free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. Call 391-2336.